This is in response to Dr. Paul Kruckman's article on Monday, February 9th, 2015, uh, Nobody Understands Debt. And uh, I'm very grateful that uh, Dr. Grubman continues to bring this up time and time again. Most of what he's talking about today is in Europe, but I'm going to bring it back to the United States. Uh, so uh, the big word that they use over there is deleveraging. Uh, deleveraging basically means that, you know, when all of this, this uh, economic crisis started 2008, 2009, the basic premise that all the Republicans always said is, you know, when you have too much, too much debt in your house, you've got to cut back. And that might be well and true for one individual, but if every individual does that and every government does that, then the amount of money that we're not spending is not available to buy the goods and services, and then the people who, have, who are producing those goods and services, they don't have enough money, so the cycle de de continues. In fact, there is de deflationary pressure over in Europe right now. And uh, what we do know is that government debt has gone up uh, compared to private debt, but real government spending has gone down. So as we see, Obama recently, uh, 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 in his new bill, wants to increase the amount of government spending, and he wants, for every dollar that he wants to increase, uh, well, excuse me, I don't know how to put this, for every dollar he's going to put into military spending, he wants a dollar increase in all the other agency spending combined. So it's dollar for dollar, one for military, one for air, the 20 other agencies or whatever. You know, unfortunately, that's the only way he thinks he might be able to get it through Congress. And of course, he wants to offset it by doing some tax on some overseas type of stuff, a one-time deal, uh, even if they decide not to bring it back, something like that. Now, what the Republicans are going to do, I don't really know. But basically, he's saying, we need to increase spending. We have more people in the United States. We have to do more things. The SEC needs to work harder. Uh, uh, the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau needs to work harder. We need to work hard in the Department of Labor, Department of Agriculture the FCC, all of these things are coming up. The IRS especially, because we do know with the IRS, for every $1 that we increased in the IRS, we get 7 or $8 in return. Uh, I don't know where the Republicans are on that. They're not, they don't want that. But getting back to the thing, you know, at the time that government debt has gone up, and real government spending has gone down. It's been a time when uh, the, um, the the ability of governments to borrow at low interest rates is astronomically low, and may, it has never been this low for a long, long time. And and it's still low right now. But we need to, do, you know, if we want to invest, this is the time to invest because we can do it on the cheap, so to speak. When you know, when interest rates six, eight, ten percent, ten percent, that drives up the cost of a job astronomically. We're buying, we can borrow right now for next to nothing, you know. And of course, this political, this this whole thing really is not an economic crisis. It's been a political crisis. The reason it's a political crisis because just like the Republicans, it says they they don't want our children to be paying for our debt. You know, which is cowardly and incorrect. And uh, the thing is, we can do this very simply by investing now and using that that money will go right back into the economy, which will help generate things and help things get going. Now, uh, the Republicans, they don't want to do that. They want, But you see, they have a dual interest. They have a dual interest. One is, is that it'll help them get elected. And number two, they don't really like to help poor people or moderate, you know, people of modest means. They only want to help the rich people. So the answer that they have only is cut taxes, cut taxes for the rich. That's the only thing they have, you know. Now, uh, uh, as I said, real growth has slowed very dramatically. Um, there is, it, it's basically all a political type of a thing. And it's a political crisis. And it looks like Greece is actually going to make some dramatic changes. They may even get out of the euro. And then if once one con country gets out of the euro, the point is what the, what the hell is, is the euro for in general if one can get out and still exist? Uh, so uh, these are changes that are coming on. They're coming on rapidly. Uh, but I want to point out that you know what's happening in the United States is the same thing is still going on right now. Uh, we d we do not need to increase government spending. We need to decrease government spending. That's the, that that is what is coming from our brothers and sisters on the Republican side, and that we don't uh, uh, and that we don't need to invest in the IRS. We don't need to invest in the Department of Agriculture. You know we can self-regulate these things. We can self-regulate with the SEC. You know whereas day in and day out you hear of reports you know of fraud uh, and abuse. Which is not on the government side. It's on the <laughs> it's on, <laughs> it's on the private sector side. So um, I think that it's it, and and of course the other thing is again we need to invest in things in the United States 
to help drive this economy. We have done study after study that shows that if we had invested six, eight years ago, we would be re reaping the rewards right now. We still have a large segment of the population that is un unemployed, underemployed, and not even looking for work. Those things could be freed up very easily if we invested in the country, invested in the things that will make us more productive. Of course, just as the example of the roads, bridges, and highways, one with a gas tax and possibly an investment in those types of things, will drive wages, wages will drive for, for good wages, and will uh, uh, in, uh, increase spending in the United States. And that's what we need. We need to keep this driving going along. And all of the naysayers who say uh, only the rich people create jobs, that we have to provide for the job creators, they're just basically full of crap.